Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming, everybody. And uh, thank you, Crane, for being willing to share your expertise. Uh, we are all in dire need of your services. Uh, so it's going to be better for the world and for all of us that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> all I care about helping queers <laughs> yeah so I'm I'm gonna hand the mic to you and um, let you take us down the rabbit hole cool um, hey y'all I'm crane um, I guess I'll give a little bit about me um, for those of y'all who don't know me because I see there's um, some of my clients and one of my friends who doesn't even live on this coast is on here thanks um, <laughs> But uh, so I've been a master barber and a hairstylist for 10 years now. Um, I am based out of Asheville, North Carolina um, in West Asheville at a little uh, pretty radical kind of queer punk salon. Um, I specialize in gender and identity affirming services, uh, which means that I spend a wonderfully large amount of my time with some pretty rad queers um, and their really fun hair. Um, and that means that I do everything from like buzz cuts and high end tights to like crazy mullets. Um, those are my favorite things. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much to, you know, CSE and Al for asking me to do this and for all of y'all for being here. I'm super stoked. Um, let's see. The first thing I did, um, I went through everybody's questions that y'all answered and definitely one of the biggest things I saw was how do I trim my own neckline? Um, which is legit because that shit is real difficult to do. Um, so, uh, it's so difficult in fact that even though I've been doing this for 10 years and have been cutting my own hair, hopefully well for about 25 years, um, it's really, really hard to do your own neckline and to fade your own neckline out. So I actually, for that, I made a tutorial, um, that I can show you, um, and I have it going really fast. Uh, so, um, when I start the tutorial, if y'all have like questions or want me to stop or anything, please feel free to let me know. Um, Al is going to be monitoring the chat. So if there's anything I need to stop and talk about, I will be happy to do it. Um, one thing you will also notice is I sped it up because sweet Jesus, it took me a long time to do this. Um, so I will say when y'all go to do your own necklines, um, give yourself a good amount of time and don't be mad at yourself if it's like taking forever, if it's not perfect, because I do this for a living and it's not easy. Um, so, okay. Um, so just for everybody who's just joining us, um, I, uh, I'm going to start with a pre-recorded tutorial on how to do your neckline. Um, and so I sped it up because it took me over 15 minutes to do. Um, and so it's going to take you a long time too, especially since I did this like one little chunk. Um, but so I'm going to go ahead and start that and then um, feel free to like ask questions while that's happening. Um, let's see, how do I do this? I'm getting there. Sorry, technology is not grandpa's strong point. Here we go. Um, oh my God. Sorry, sorry. I don't know what's happening. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, so please feel free to like, you know, ask me to um, ask me to pause the video, ask me to explain anything. Um, I'm going to talk over it. I will say I'm starting. Let me see. As you can see, I have pretty uh, long hair right in here. Um, I am growing this entire side out. And so I'm going to be doing this little piece down here. Um, and but it's it's you're going to do the same thing regardless. So I'm starting with a one and a half. Um, and a one and a half is uh, the guard that I'm using. So that is going to leave like a small amount of stubble. Um, but, uh, but not take everything off. It's still enough that you can kind of like grab onto it. And as you can see, like literally just this one part, it's, it's not easy just getting it all down. Um, and so I'm going to say several times during this thing, like, do not feel bad if this takes you a while, do not feel bad if it's difficult and you screw things up. That is what happens. Um, and I, 
went to school for a couple years for this and have screwed up a lot of hair uh, before. So don't feel bad. Um, so I did the one and a half all the way up kind of to right in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to right in here kind of with my one and then I'm gonna keep working down. The reason I start up here is because um, there's no reason to, you know, like if you can start with the longest, then you can just work down. And if you watch a lot of barber videos on YouTube, they go very, very short down here, and then they do a little longer here, and they go up and they create lines that then they have to go back in and blend out. The difference is if you go, if you start up here with your one and a half, and then you go to your one here, it's a lot easier to blend and not make lines in it. So you'll notice I, I kind of get shorter as I go, which tends to be the opposite of what most barbers do. Um, I am, so this is me doing the one, and what I'm doing there, you can see how I'm holding my, um, that's a weird picture to stop on. So I'm holding my hand right here. What I'm doing is because this guard is shorter and I don't want to go all the way up there and ruin what I just put in, I'm just holding my fingers right in here so that this guard will bump up against my fingers and not go up into this hair. Quick question, Crane, because that's yeah. a, a good place to stop. Um, if you only have a one or two, this is from Holiday, mm -hmm. um, which should you use instead of a one and a half? Um, so I would say, you know, if you want to go maybe a little bit on the longer side, go with a two. Um, and then, so forgive me, it, um, does Holiday have a one and a two or, or just one or the other? No, it's from Noel, and okay. Noel has a one and a two. Okay, cool. All right, so Noel, you want to start up in here, do your two, and then your one goes down here. So the it, the longer your hair is, the higher the number is, essentially. It all goes up in increments of an eighth of an inch. Um, so you'd want to start with your two up here, and then you go your one down here, and later in this, um, I'm gonna kind of stop because I'll, it'll be a little bit better example. But um, what you wanna do is when you get your two in, then when you're gonna go shorter, instead of pulling it like all the way up, you can kind of see, do, do, let's see, let me go back just a little bit. Okay, so in here, if you wanna watch when I'm using the clippers, You'll notice that I don't go like up and stick it against my head. I actually kind of let the clipper sort of pivot out. If you see that, do you see what I mean? Um, blah. You mean out as in like out toward your ear, out away from your face, out? Um, yeah, so you're gonna come in like against the neckline here and you know, against the neck and then you can kind of see where I have it a little bit longer. Here's that weight right there. So right in here, you'll notice that's where I kind of pull out and I pull it away from my head. And that's just to make sure that you're not going up really high into the, the length you've already created. And what I'm saying here is right in here, you'll notice I have, um, it looks like a, a really heavy spot or a shadow spot. I have an indentation right there on the side of my head, like a lot of us do all in here. So if when you're doing this, you're like, why does this look spotty? Like, what am I doing wrong? There's a good chance it's not you. It's just that humans have weird bumpy heads. Um, so that's, that's something I like to tell people. And so what I've done here now is I've gone down, I had a one and a half up here and I did my one in here. And so now this guard that I have on now is a 0.5. And so that's a really, really thin guard. Um, and those are really great for when you're doing kind of the very bottom of your neckline, um, but you want a tiny bit of stubble left. You don't want to totally give yourself like a bald fade at the bottom. Is that um, about like if you have an adjustable clippers and you don't yeah. have a guard on it, but you have it on the longest setting? 
So yeah, you can actually, what I'm going to do next is use it without a guard. So I've still got my 0.5. Um, but so yeah, if you look right in here, you can see that little lever. And so yeah, that lever will toggle it from like a, essentially like a, tr a, a triple lot, which is very, very short up to, depending on your clipper, up to a one. Um, unfortunately, there is no like universal measurement. Every clipper company does things a little differently. Um, I do recommend if you have, you know, the option, getting yourself one of the clippers that does have the thing on the side, which did just show, okay. So yeah, you can see my little thing right in here and that adjusts it. So what we call that is open and closed. So if it's open, it's the longest it's gonna get. And if it's closed, it's the shortest it's gonna get. And you can open and close it while you have different guards on it. So you can make it a little easier to fade it yourself just by using those little incremental clicks. Um, and if you do not have a trimmer that does that, that's totally fine. You can still do all that. Um, you know, you can still use the guards. Uh, guards are gonna be even more important then. Um, but yeah, so through here, I'm just going in with my 0.5 and you can see where I just sort of like pointed at it right there a little bit, this very flattering look on my face. Um, so this is your, your little lever. And what I'm saying here is that I'm going to take my uh, guard off and I'm going to start just using this lever to dictate how long it's going to be. Great. Um, yes. uh, Cara also asked about uh, mirrors, like how you set them up. And I'm also to myself thinking about how important maybe lighting is too. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm going to let this keep going, kind of catch back up to where we were. Um, so my mirror situation, um, I was actually going to mention to y'all, um, I have several mirrors and I have a ring light, um, and that makes it a lot easier. Uh, like the reason that the lighting is really good here and you can actually see what I'm doing is because I have a ring light. Um, and I'm going to pause it there because I want to talk about that. Um, but so I've got my mirror here. And then you can see my, my reflection here. What I do is I have either a large mirror behind me, so over here, um, and a small one here, or just uh, like a hand mirror, kind of depending on what you're doing. And you kind of have to mess with the angles a little bit for it to, to get it in the right position. Um, let's see, and I'm happy to go back, and that's gonna be available, um, let's see, there we go. That'll be available also, and I can reshow. I can also send that to people um, with more information. I am so happy to give you all the free information you want. Um, the mirrors can be tricky. If you have lighting that helps, um, my lighting in my apartment, I have big windows, but honestly, my lighting sucks. And so I rely on this job here, uh, which is my ring light. And then I'm going to show y'all. I also have a ah, giant mirror. And so what I did when I was doing my hair is I had my mirror set up like this. And then I could see the reflection of the camera in the mirror or the reflection of the computer in the mirror. There's, it's not a science. There is no way for me to be like, these are the exact angles you should set it up. Um, so mess around with mirrors. If you have a big like mirror in your bathroom, that tends to be the easiest one to use. Um, and then just kind of move around from there. Um, as far as lighting goes, um, you can, you can use a ring light, which is what I have, which can make you look very washed out, which is holy crap, what it's doing to me right now. Um, or, uh, Honestly, I mean, in the salon, we don't really have fancy lighting. It's, it's a lot of just light sources from lots of different places. The biggest issue tends to be it's hard to fight shadow. Um, and so I would say, you know, if you need help 
fighting shadow, like that's that's when you know it's it gets tricky. I'm sorry, I'm trying to not wash myself out with this thing. Um, it can get tricky, but definitely, uh, yeah, set up your mirrors in a couple different spots and mess around with lighting a lot. So, a couple quick questions, Crane. Um, and it sounds like sort of the takeaway from the mirror discussion is have the biggest mirror behind you. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. you have to have a much smaller mirror, make that the one in front. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So also Holiday wants to know, because those clippers are fly, what's the brand and about the like dollar amount price point? So these are, um, these are Babyliss clippers. It's um, B-A-B-Y-L-I-S-S. -S. Um, I love these things. Uh, I'm a sucker for nice packaging. I like rose gold a lot and they're cordless, which I like. These are pretty freaking expensive. I want to say full price, they're um, two to three hundred dollars. Um, but I mean, they're, they're worth it. They cut really, really nicely, really smoothly. They're not going to yank out your hair. Um, also helps if you've ever tried to give yourself a buzz cut and you've noticed that you go over it a million ways and you've still got little bits sticking out, a really good pair of clippers will help that so much. Um, and so, yeah, like the, if anybody wants more details on like clipper brands, um, I use, my trimmer is also Babyliss, also cordless. Um, I would be happy to talk to you about it, send you links, help you find them, um, or recommend something that might be a little less expensive that would totally serve your purposes. And Allison has put a link to Babyliss products in the chat. Thanks, Allison. So, <laughs> um, also, on the clipper topic, Liz wonders for coarse hair, is there a particular direction to shave? Yes, thank you. That is such a good question. Um, so, if you have like real coarse curly hair, um, it depends on what part of the head you're working on um, and kind of how your curl formation works. So if you are, say, working on the top of your head and you want your waves to actually be visible, you don't want to destroy your wave pattern or your curl pattern, you want to go with the grain of the hair. So um, for, uh, for white hair, for hair that tends to be finer and a little more malleable, um, you can go up and that's going to be good. With coarse hair, you want to go down like that that is going to encourage your wave and cut it with the the grain of your wave and so it's going to um it's going to give you a really really nice even finish while not destroying your wave pattern and making it stick up everywhere um and you know so yeah and the same thing goes so if you are like if you're doing you know like your your excuse me your fade and you know, real short on top, start with clippers on top and go with the grain, which can be tricky. You kind of have to like get used to it. Um, but you know, just kind of go forward like that. And then y'all know your heads better than I do. So if you know that you've got like a spot right here that goes in a different direction, go, you know, like just don't, you know, just work around that and then work with the direction that goes in. Um, let your growth patterns, and this is really one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give to anyone, especially with curly hair. Let your growth patterns dictate what you do. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've been doing this for 10 years and have a butt ton of college debt because to learn how to do this. Um, and so little tricks like that, um, like just taking it step by step, giving yourself plenty of time and trying not to get frustrated those, those things will really help you a lot. Um, and I think, um, oh, another thing, if you have a nail brush, um, I didn't bring one home because I didn't know I was going to be doing tutorials. I'm sorry, I don't have all my stuff. Um, but if you have a nail brush, nail brushes are really, really great. And if I've given you a fade in the salon, I've probably used a nail brush on the side of your head. Because what happens is when you use your clippers, no matter what texture your hair is, but especially if you have curly hair, you use your clippers, but those little bits of hair can get stuck there. And so you end up like going over things more times than you need to, or thinking you have to take something shorter than you do. When in reality, if you just 
you go over and then you use like a, a, fing a fingernail brush or like a boar bristle brush or something like that, just to, you know, kind of get all that out. It will give you a much more realistic idea of what you're actually working with on your scalp. Great. Uh, quick question from Cara. Any recommendations for cheaper clippers? Yeah. Um, so Babilis makes um, some clippers that are not as high end as these. Um, I don't love their not so high end clippers. If you were going to go for a not as high end, I would say Oster. Um, they are very widely available. They are kind of, um, they're like the, the old school of the, the barber clippers. I started my career using them and it was very difficult for me to come to terms with the fact that something could be better because they are workhorses. Um, and they're great. Uh, they have a lower end line. I'm pretty sure you can buy it at like Target and Walmart. Um, so I would say going with Oster and they make uh, kits. So you'll get like your guards, your clipper, um, a little brush to clean it, oil, um, stuff like that. And if anyone has clippers they need uh, help maintaining or have questions about any of that, you can also reach out to me later um, and I will take you step by step through maintenance on clippers and stuff like that too. So it looks like Ivy is wondering if Oster makes uh, cordless clippers. Oster makes a cordless yes. clipper. I have not used it, so I can't guarantee how good it is. Um, I will tell you that if they make the cordless clipper, it's going to be a lot more money than a corded clipper. Um, cordless clippers tend to run professionally about $75 to $100 more. Um, they're worth it. I do this 20 times a day. It's worth it. But for y'all, might not be worth it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But if 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 money isn't really an issue, then yeah, get yourself a nice pair of corded uh, cordless clippers. Oster makes great stuff, and yeah, they've been around forever. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. So at this stage, y'all, um, feel free to continue to ask questions via chat. Um, I think we've gone over what you had to say about neckline stuff. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is another important thing that a lot of people are concerned with now? This stuff. Um, yeah. As far as like short hair barbering goes, this stuff in here. Um, and so I am going to um, <clears throat> go over this with some tips because um, you saw in the neckline tutorial, I had my hair clipped up and pulled over. That is super, super, super important. And one of the best things you could do for yourself when you're doing your own hair. Um, I say that because whether you want your fade to be like a low fade and like just be in here, if you do, you can just clipper all this other stuff. So you don't have to worry about accidentally shaving this stuff off if you don't want to. You can just have your, your clip be right there and then your clipper up to there. Um, for me, I am going to take all this stuff and clip it over. And I have, I have different professional clips. Um, they look like this or this. Um, these are duckbill clips and I really, really love these things. Um, if you don't have professional clips, which why would you? Um, butterfly clips are great and it's the 90s are popular again. So I'm really into butterfly clips. You can also use these really awesome hair combs like your great grandmama might have had. Um, these are great because even without a clip, you just throw it in your hair and then it's, it's there. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So that's a really good thing to use also. So I am going to just throw some clips in my hair so that I don't cut off more than I want to. And we're going to be focusing around the ear and then kind of up through here. <coughs> Excuse me. And get our clips back. There are a couple of things while you're, while you're getting set up, not to distract you, but um, we talk a lot about presentation and about um, different like femme appearances and mask appearances, um, non-binary. And in order to give everybody as much information to make as many choices as possible, I know you mentioned having tips on if somebody wants to create a really femme hairline or a really masculine hairline um, wow. as it pertains to sort of normative popular culture. <laughs> right. Um, 
what would you say as you're doing this? So one of the most important things, um, if you are looking to create um, a more masculine shape or structure on the head, uh, we learn in school, if you are trying to create something masculine, the, the words we, because society is weird and the patriarchy, the words we tend to associate with masculine are like strong, um, square, like very like, uh, you know, like very definite things, lots of edges um, and a little more rigidity. And so if you are looking to build a more masculine shape on your head and you are assigned female at birth, our heads tend to be a bit rounder. And so what you can do is instead of like you can see, like this is up pretty high, my head starts to round in right here. So you want to go below that. And so you're going to come in a bit lower and clip that stuff off if your hands work, which mine do sometimes. So that you can see it's just a bit lower, but what that does is it makes it so that you can come up and take this really, really short and create a square look so say you want to come super, super short with that, then you get this to the length you want. So you want this down to like a one and a half. So you take it to a one and a half here, and then you take this stuff down, these little bits, you're going to have the little side pieces. Then you can actually take these down and blend them. Like you see hairstylists do this a lot and hold out hair. So if you want, you go in, you establish your line there, and then you can come in and go in and cut this so that it's the same length as your stuff down here. And that is going to build that square shape. So instead of taking your clippers and using the guard and going all the way in and then rounding your head accidentally, start lower because you can always cut more off and then once you have that line and you've got that length you want to create that square that's when you flop some of this stuff down and you kind of go in and you would just i'm not actually going to cut it off but you would just go in and cut it there to create that square um is that does that make sense is that discernible to everybody yeah and i don't want to perpetuate any kind of like binary thinking about mask or femme appearance or anything like that. So um, yeah, so we can use terms like, I don't know, square versus rounded. Um, but I think it's helpful to continue to talk about, you know, how important this is for us who are stuck at home to be able to continue to look exactly how we want to look and embody the identities we want to embody. Um, so it's really helpful. And I encourage anybody who wants to chat or, or call in any other kind of um, languaging around how we talk about our appearances, please feel free to do so. Um, but if you're curious, if you're like, what shape do my, my burns need to be in order to emphasize this quality of my face? Um, questions like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, and, and, you know, there's, um, you know, speaking strictly to like a kind of uh, trying to achieve a more masculine look. There are also things you can do like with your eyebrows. Um, my eyebrows, I change a lot kind of depending on my mood. Um, so like right now they've got a bit of an arch to them and they're a bit more like manicured and feminine. But I also have times where I will go in and like erase that arch and make them just look thicker and more like squared. Um, that is something that will really masculinize someone's face um, is creating more of like a, a flatter eyebrow with less of an arch. Um, and that's one of those things too, where if you want more information or a tutorial about that, let me know and I'll shoot one. That's never a problem. Um, yeah, so um, definitely in, you know, trying to take care of your hair at home, um, trying to sort of keep a more masculine shape um, or just keep it keep it tight on the sides because it doesn't really matter which presentation is if you want to have this short on the side. Um, so live tutorial time. So as you can see, this stuff is all pretty thick because I've been letting it grow out. I am going to start again with my one and a half. 
And then, so one and a half is as high as I want to go up. So say I want to do a one and a half to like right there. Of course, now my clips aren't working. Maybe in the next um, Southern Equality Studios, we can make clips. <laughs> we can, we can just build our own, DIY, build our own hair clips. Will you tell us how to etch them with pretty designs though, Al? Because that was so awesome. Next week in Southern Equality Studios. All right, I'll stop, All right. I'll stop interrupting you. Please don't. Um, so a one and a half, like I said, you're gonna start with your longest, just like you do on your neckline. Um, and you're gonna go in and just take that right off. And so now I can show you, when I was talking in the neckline tutorial about kind of pulling it out and rocking it away, this is what I meant. So you're gonna go in and you just rock it out. So go in, rock it out. Um, and you'll see, like, I'm trying to keep this pretty low because I'm not trying to cut all my hair off. Yeah, I'm already nervous about what you're doing right now. See, that's why I have the clips in, though, because my clip isn't going to let me go where I don't want to go. I'm still terrified. Um, <laughs> well, the good thing is, is that none of us are going anywhere for like a month, so we can all look just bonkers and uh, nobody going to care. <laughs> So, you know, if your choice is like dysphoria because your hair's too long or like, oh, this looks patchy and weird, like I'm going to go with patchy and weird all day long. Um, <laughs> my dysphoria has been kicking my ass lately, so I certainly understand why other people would be having that. So, just going in. And then this stuff here is really not easy. Um, luckily, humans' ears tend to be very flexible. Yours might not be. Um, but as you can see, I can fold mine all the way down. So if you can, fold your ear down, um, and then you come in with your clipper, and you just kind of do that around your ear. And I recommend doing around your ear with the longest guard you have to start with, because it's really easy to take too much off or to do it in kind of a weird direction. Um, when I was younger, one of my friends cut my hair and was trimming my hair and took the clipper and just did that. And so I had a square right there on both sides. Don't do that to yourself unless it's on purpose because it wasn't cute. Um, <laughs> so, and I'm still on my one and a half because I am doing um, like a pretty like sharp fade in front and I'm just cleaning this stuff up so it's not poking over my ear and making me crazy. And so I'm doing this on a one and a half and I'm using my levers because this does slightly change the length. Um, so I've got it all the way open so it's on the longest and that's how I started. And that rocking out motion that I do, that's how you achieve that sort of cool weight line look. If you, if you prefer that in the front, you just wanna make sure that you're rocking it out really nicely. And so that's, that's your first pass. So now that's the one and a half. I'm gonna go to the one um, and I do the one open. I go from one and a half open to one open. It's fine. The open and close only really changes things when you get super short. Um, but so this is my one and it's open. And so I'm gonna come in and just do a little bit more. And so we've taken our one and a half all the way to up here. And so, we're gonna come in, say we wanna do our one to here. So then you can either put your finger there like I did, or you can put another clip there if it's long enough. But you come in and then it's not gonna go past where you want it. So then I'm going to put this lower. So I've still got my one, but now it's a one closed. And you're just gonna keep doing this. And every time you just want to remember, so I have my one and a half here, then we put our one in right here. And so a good rule of thumb I use is my cheekbone right here. I kind of use my cheekbone and the shape of my face to decide what angle I'm going to use all the way back here. Um, it's, it's not a, it's not a, 
presentation thing is like attached to identity or gender. It's just um, tends to be more flattering if you remember to use the shape of your head. Um, and that's another reason like when you're rocking it out, that's a great part about um, using that motion when using clippers with, uh, with a guard on them. Because a lot of times what happens, and a lot of us have done this to ourselves, you've got your guard, you go up, and then you're just working with the shape of your head. And so you accidentally round it in, even though you don't want to. Um, so guards or not, you do want to try to really do that rock out thing, unless you're trying to get the exact same length all over. Um, so yeah, so now we're going to do our rocking out. And you just kind of pull it out or pivot. And I don't know if you can hear it. But you'll hear when you get up into the hair that you haven't cut yet or that you haven't gone as short with, you'll start to hear those little bits of hair get cut. You want to listen for that sound because that's how you know that you're right there on the border of where you want it to maybe get a little bit longer. Um, and so it's one of those things like it, this is cutting your own hair is a very sort of like intuitive, almost like meditative thing because you really have to be very aware of like, okay, you know, this spot, I can tell this because like I'm holding my finger or because I know my cheekbones here or, you know, those, those kind of things. Getting to know your own head sounds silly, but it can be really, really helpful. Um, just like I, when I was back here, I was telling you, I have this image indentation right in here that makes it look shadowed. Um, everybody has those all over their heads. Um, and a lot of people have them right here. So I don't know if y'all can see how I've got our one and a half, our one, and then it's pretty much disappeared right here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my guard off totally. And then you've got, let's see, yeah. So then you can see it kind of move up and down. I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me, the longest setting. By the way, I'm not sick. I have allergies and post-nasal drip, so I always sound like this. <laughs> um, so you're taking no guard with it open, and you're just going to go in at the very bottom of what you want to fade, and just be really, really tender with it. Take your time. Take, especially with this part, really do take your time. It's worth it. You're worth it. Your dysphoria being a little bit kinder to you is totally worth an hour and a half staring at the side of your head in the mirror. Um, so it's not a, like a quick question for you, Karen. For folks with really sensitive skin, mm -hmm. there's a lot of passes over your head and sides of your face. Is there right. anything you recommend to people either putting on their skin or before, during, or after to make this um, go a little bit more smoothly? Well. That's a really good question. Is it good to do this with dirtier hair, cleaner hair, greasier head? Um, it depends on your hair. So I, I always say like, you definitely want to clip her dry hair. Don't clip her wet hair. Um, cause it'll pull way more. It won't go even, um, anything to put on the skin. Honestly, um, you don't want to put too much on the skin because you don't want to change the way your clippers are going to move against your your scalp um you know if you put anything too gummy then your clippers are going to get gummed up if you're if you put anything too greasy it's it's going to cut funny um <clears throat> excuse me and if you're if your skin's really slick it might be harder for you to control um however if that's a problem that you're having i would say use a tiny bit of coconut oil and then just be really, really mindful that, you know, like after every, you know, couple few passes, if you've got a coconut oil or something in your hair, clean this real well. Use your brush that comes with your clippers and clean this um, so that it doesn't get um, really gummy and full of stuff that you're not going to be able to cut with. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. So you can go as short or as long as you want with this. Um, also, you know, like, I mean, this is all pretty short, so I can show you like real quick, like, so it's a one and a half up here, but I'm just going to take it to what this is, is like a, a three aught. So I'm just going to take it to a three aught all the way up. 
And so you can see it really changes things. Like that is a huge difference. So you have this like, you can do, you know, do it up higher and then you can give yourself a higher fade if you want to. Or I have lately been really, really into the like kind of more structured, like you can see this has a curve to it. It's a little more of like an avant-garde look. You can just take it all the way up, but you've got that structure that you put into it. So now it's kind of like a, Warhol inspired haircut as opposed to sort of like a more standard fade. Um, I do I do a lot of this. I really like a lot of uh, stuff like this. It's very popular in, in queer culture. Um, but uh, also just, I mean, uh, straight culture definitely tends to crib a lot from queer culture. And so that is becoming more popular um, in mainstream culture as well, which I think is cool because hair is fun and should be fun. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is one of the other things that's difficult to do on your own, as you can see, I trimmed this away, but I still have like all this uneven stuff by my ears. So I combed it all down in the direction I want it to go in. And then I'm taking my little clippers here and I'm just going to come at, and you wanna use the corner here if you go in like that, you're going to create a line, do some stamping stuff. If you use your corner, you're going to be able to get those little hairs around your ear. Just, let's see, just like that without totally screwing up the line you made or totally just like going in and eating into your hair. So if the thing that one more time sorry to interrupt but i feel like that just blew a bunch of people's minds who have tried to to um to trim over their ears with clippers and have gotten really horrible results so let, can we see that one more time if i had an instant replay i would slow it down and <laughs> do it. definitely definitely so yeah so um first you want to comb your hair in the direction it's going <clears throat> and then use your clippers and again use the corner of your clippers and you're just going to go in and go along that line that you want to make and just go in and clean that up and then obviously i can't really do it very well right now because i don't have any hair here but if you need to if you want to leave this longer sorry y'all i should have thought about this if you want to leave this longer you can comb this down into the way you want it and then you just literally use that corner right around your ear so like where your ear meets your face kind of right here, that's where you want to just take that edge and just clean that up. And you can be pretty gentle with it. I would recommend being gentle with it at first. Um, but yeah, that's like, I'm not actually going to cut this, but to show you what it would be like, you're going to take this stuff here and you're going to just literally hold it down with your comb and you can hold your ear down at the same time. And then you can just go around your ear like that. And again, it takes practice. You will mess this up. Practice before you think you're actually gonna be able to go out and see anybody. Um, but it's, you can use your comb. You can use your comb to keep the hair going the direction you want and then use your trimmer to even do something super simple. I hope my trim there. So you can go in, do all that, and say you just want to like clean all this stuff up. You can just comb it all forward, and then with your trimmer, just go in like that. And then you've cleaned up all these little stray hairs here and kind of reformed your hairline and given yourself something a little different. And that way you can clean up around your ears without actually having to cut all of this off. <clears throat> um, did that make sense? Was that more viewable? That's great, thanks. Cool. Also, this, I've never done, oh, sorry. No, no, I'm fine. I was just going to say, someone has a question that they want to grow out their sideburns to, hand, to hide a rounder jawline, okay. but keep it short over the ears and the bangs, and do you have any tips for that? I do, I do. Um, let's see, so, uh, kind of uh, moving like in a more masculine look, but still wanting to like, so having it short here, but then keeping this long. There are ways you can do it, <coughs> excuse me. 
a lot of it depends on where your hairline naturally goes to. Um, so like mine goes up really, really high. Um, so when I want to create a sideburn look, um, you would take some of this stuff here and you want to cut it shorter, but you kind of want to, you know, like maybe cut it to there, you know, so if you've got, oh, thanks holiday. Thanks for coming. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, so you would say, you know, we've got our cheekbone here, typical standard. I think someone just knocked on my door. I don't know what's happening. Um, typical standard, Conway, sorry y'all, typical standard sideburns, you typically want to go kind of mid-ear, and so if you take these bits here, and you cut this part to the longest part, like, so this is where you want your sideburn to end, so then you take some more of this, and you hold it out, so... Mm -hmm. All right. So if you have this stuff here and you want to make it into a sideburn, you want to cut it, let's say right about there, then you're going to take the stuff that's just above it and you're going to pull all of it out. And then this part here that you've already cut is nice and short. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Okay. Um, thanks. So this part, you've cut it nice and short. And so you want to have this part that's right above it, meet with it, and then you cut them both that short. And so what that does is when they go back down, it looks more like an actual sideburn than when like we just sort of paste this down to our face because then it's sort of really heavy and all one length. A natural sideburn doesn't have that heaviness to it so you want to kind of create a, you know, like a little bit of length and then allow for that sort of pieciness and natural texture to be left in it so that it doesn't just look like you've used pomade and glued that to the side of your face, which is what most of us did for a long time. Um, I don't think if I have any other, any other, oh yeah. And a really good way to do that, um, whether you're trying to take off length or just um <clears throat> or just kind of like carve things out with curly hair especially you need to carve hair instead of just like cutting it straight so with something like this to give yourself a more natural looking um finish if you have texture in your hair you can kind of let it do that that thing or if you don't pull it up like this like you get mm -hmm. you know you want it like right there and so instead of just cutting it straight across, you could go down and put your shears over it. And then kind of um, when you wrap a present and you use your shears to curl the ribbon, it's the same basic idea. So you're going to use like kind of that edge and you're just going to push down and it's going to cut that. But almost bevel it really nicely so it will want to go down to your face and want to give you that more sideburn appearance um rather than if you just sort of like cut it off right there because that's not going to look terribly natural um i'm trying to think if i have any other little tricks really that's what i do that's what i do when people want sideburns um is i slowly slowly build them and so take your time. That's another thing. It, it should not be an easy process. You don't want to do that quickly, um, at least not to begin with. Um, cool. I know some folks had asked about um, trimming curly hair, uh, trimming um, baby bangs and trimming longer bangs, and someone had asked about um, mullets. Um, so I have a growing out mullet. Um, so I don't know if you can actually see. This was a mullet, now it's just sort of a bunch of hair. Um, for mullets, if you are looking to keep the length, but kind of do some more stuff here, what I recommend is you get your length here. So this is the longest piece. So this is, we want to keep all of this stuff. So then you would take, say, this stuff up here that's too long that you want to have gone and pull it out like that and then 
cut it, which is kind of like a really terrible way to give yourself layers. So don't do this for actual layers. But if you take your longest bit and cut it, can y'all see what I'm doing? You go in like that and cut it up here, then you're still going to have all this length, but all this stuff is going to be way short. So it will actually set off a mullet as opposed to it just sort of looking like a disconnected haircut. Um, what tends to happen when you do your own mullet is that like it gets heavy here and weird here. Um, and so there's a lot of kind of like, you know, you kind of want to blend it. The easiest way to blend long hair is to pull it all forward and then just cut everything to that length. So this is the very longest piece from the back. So then I have all this extra length up here, but if I wanted it gone, I would cut that and that would give you this really awesome sort of like a uh, progressive mullet that'll give you a lot more volume right here and give you some more stuff to play with. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, is a really good thing to remember when you're doing a mullet. Um, let's see, <coughs> excuse me. Um, oh, baby bangs. Um, so if you have baby bangs, which I do, um, I'm going to do two bang tutorials. The first one I'm going to do is baby bangs. Um, and these are really great. Um, if you, um, I have, my hair is thinning um, already. And so I use bangs to hide the fact that my hair is thinning and that I have a giant forehead. Um, I have found this to be super, super useful for a lot of my clients who have similar issues. Um, and a lot of my trans feminine clients, I really, really love the layered bang look that I tend to do. Um, so this is a baby bang tutorial leading into a full bang tutorial. And then you'll get to see kind of how they all work together. Um, so I've got these baby bangs and I gave myself Dracula bangs a little bit before we all went into quarantine. So I've got this long piece here. When you're doing any bang, really, our natural inclination is to kind of, you know, comb it all down and then just cut it straight across. Don't do that. Um, it's not going to be even. It's going to look real funky. So what I recommend is you go in, comb everything where you want it. And if you want your bangs to go to the side, comb them to the side. Um, and then you go in with your shears like this and you take little bits. That way you're not creating this weird chunked line. You're just cleaning it up a little bit. And you can see that that, I mean, it, it does the job very quickly, but it's not going to give you that like really heavy, like bowl bang, um, unless that's what you're going for. But this is a good way to get sort of like a piecier effect with your bangs is you just go in and this is called end texturizing but you're literally just going in and clipping off the very, very ends just to even it up and um, not take too much off at one time. Um, baby bangs are pretty easy. Longer bangs, um, what I do with my bangs is I have my very short bang because it's cute and it hides my forehead because my forehead literally goes all the way back there. Um, so then I have this stuff on top and so I do what's called layered bangs. Um, it's something I started pushing for a lot of my clients. Um, it's fun because you can do a lot with them. You can, like right now, curtain bangs are very popular. And that's when the bangs are really long here and kind of split. So you can do that, but then have this fun layer underneath it too. Um, so it creates the illusion of having way more hair than you think you do. Um, so. If you're gonna do that, if you so want just to, just be clear, you could start your bangs from the back of your head if you wanted to. You you can do anything. It's your head. You can do anything you want. Um, Great. So I feel liberated. <laughs> so because I do have kind of a mullet shag, I naturally like this stuff kind of comes forward on me. Um, but yeah, you know, like I have a very like thin, like you know, a relatively thin layer of bang right here. So if I wanted to, I could take all of that. So that's like, you know, stuff that would be considered more of like a regular bang. And then take your scissors 
And what I recommend is slide cutting. And so you're going to literally just go in and just slide your shear down your hair. You don't want to take a whole bunch off. What that does is it takes off just enough to kind of get you your, you know, get your bangs kind of going over in the direction you want them to. It takes a little bit of the weight out so that when they come forward, they are piecier and a little more broken up than they would be. Um, if you want to do a full bang, you can, you know, it used to be like you took a big V out of the front of your head and you did your bangs that way. I actually really enjoy kind of a flatter, more straight across bang. Um, so you got this stuff. So comb this stuff down. And then if you want, um, you know, say you wanted like a, a bang to come to like, you know, right here as your shortest point. You want to, do, do, do. you can twist it and cut it like that. And then the stuff in the middle is going to be shortest. And this stuff has had to travel to get there. So it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, and that's what you want to do. That's what I recommend with most bangs. Unless you're doing a really, really strong shape bang, I recommend having it be a little bit longer on the sides. It um, lends itself to creating a really nice, soft, feminine shape um, and gives you a lot of pieciness um, to work with. So you can either twist it in like this, or you can take a very thin strip in the middle. And then you find out where you want your bangs to start. So then if we wanted our bang to start like right in here, you do that. And then you go over here and you've got these lengths. You've got this shorter length and this longer length. And you want them to meet up so that you have this nice sort of um, curtain bang effect. So we've got our shortest bit here. So we're going to take our shortest bit and go down. So you don't have to go crazy, but as you can see, it just makes a really nice sort of curtain effect. So it'll be a little easier to see in front, but it'll still have long bangs. So you can get that really nice full, like fringy layered effect, even if you don't have a crap ton of hair, um, because I have very little hair. Let me think of what else I could say. Oh, if you want to, you know, if you get a curtain bang or you cut that yourself and you're really liking the way it looks, you can keep going. Like if you have a bang that's all this, then, you know, you got your short length here and you got it going longer. Like once you get down to here, you're giving yourself layers. So you can actually just slide cut in layers too to continue that. And that way you can kind of give yourself this really nice, um, sort of easy to maintain, slightly updated look um, without having to give yourself like Betty Page bangs and then being very grateful that you can wear hats and Zoom meetings. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Can I answer any questions? Is there anything else someone would like to see me demonstrate? Um, yeah, let's open it up to questions. We've got a um, little under 20 minutes, a little over 15 minutes left. So um, if folks have questions, you can ask them verbally, you can ask them in the chat. Um, I have a few, but I'll go ahead and open it up if nobody has anything. Yeah, Bea? One moment, let me unmute you. There you go. Okay, can you hear me? So my question is how do i go and trim these without having them lose their shape because i just need to like give them a quick cut but i've done it before where i just like cut it across and then they just like all over the place so yeah. what tip do you have for like keeping that like shape that they have so with with curls like yours um really most curls but especially when curls get tighter you want to pick up your individual curl um so like let's see right here so if this was, you know, if, if this was bugging me, you can go in with those individual curls and do that slide cutting. And you don't have to take off a ton, you take off however much you want.
but you slide cut it and do your curls one at a time. And that's going to let them stay curls. It's going to um, help it uh, so that the ends don't, you know, the frayed ends aren't trying to kind of glom on together. Um, it'll help keep your curls uh, better formed while still getting them out of your face. Um, and then from there, if you're finding that, you know, this stuff is looking better, but it's still really heavy in here, um, you can pull your curls, you know, you obviously don't want to like pull them, uh, pull them flat, but you know, pull your curls up some and you can do that same method, that slide uh, cutting method. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's going to, that's going to take out a lot of that unnecessary bulk. That's just sort of weighing your hair down and making it so your curls can't pop out. Cool. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. So I'm going to go ahead and ask while other folks are, if you want to raise your hand, if you have a question or just go ahead and unmute yourself, go ahead and jump in. Um, but I've heard a lot of people either say, well, I'm just going to grow my hair out or, well, I'm just going to shave it all off. Um, one, I guess, what are some of the things that people could consider as they're growing it out? Like maybe dead ends, how to maintain those, um, tricky spots that can help people um, retain some sense of self while they're in, in that ugly, awful phase that feels like it's neither here nor there. Um, and then same question for, well, I'm just going to buzz it all off. Like, what are some things you would tell to folks? Right. Um, so depending on where you're growing your hair out from, uh, that definitely has a lot to do with it. Um, I always say like, if you, uh, if you really want to grow your hair out, um, and it's real short, like the easiest way to grow your hair out from a pixie is either get a mullet, um, and like just let it grow into a mullet and be cute or to let everything else grow out, um, and just kind of keep the neckline trimmed. Um, I have found that when a lot of my, um, more mass presenting clients are uh, trying to grow their hair out. There's there's that area where it's like, I, it doesn't matter like how you identify or what the world sees you like, you see yourself and you're just like, oh yeah, I'm a girl, look at that, I'm real femme, still shit. Um, and, uh, and so I think if you are, if you're looking to try to grow out short hair, but still keep it in a pretty mask shape, um, if it's to the point where it needs to be parted, um, part it down the middle and put it in a ponytail, uh, because that is sort of the, like, or just part it down the middle and leave it, because it's that very 90s skater boy look that's really popular right now, um, and I love that, um, let's see, uh, two, two, two. sorry, I have, um, really serious ADD, and sometimes the Adderall doesn't work. I um, ask a lot of questions too, all at once. It's one of my favorite things to give people. Um, the, so that was the growing out question. Right. And um, so also maybe the same question for folks who already have longer hair, but who tend to keep it um, a little more tightly groomed. Gotcha. So um, trimming your own split ends can be tricky. Um, one thing that's really, really important is having a good pair of shears you don't have to have professional shears. Um, please do not spend that much money. They are absurdly expensive. Um, but you can get a decent pair of hair cutting shears from like CVS, Target, um, places like that. The reason you want to have a hair cutting shear and a, a good sharp one and not like a kitchen shear or fabric shear or anything, every shear is made to cut a specific thing. And so um, hair shears are designed to not cause split ends when you use them. But if you cut your hair with like a kitchen shear or something, you're actually going to split your ends again. You're just damaging your hair and making it just as bad, but shorter. Um, so getting, getting a better pair of shears is actually super, super important. Um, from there, when, you know, if you've got long hair, depending on the texture of your hair, if you've got, you know, um, like Allison has that really lovely, nice sort of uh, longer, you know, straight hair, like that, you can literally just, like you were telling me, you want me to just kind of like, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but so you just like, literally, like you can just pick up a section and comb it through. And then you'll have like these bits on the ends that you'll see like, oh, those are frayed and uneven. And then you just cut them. And you can do that like 
while you're sitting on the couch watching Netflix or whatever and just go through your hair and do that. Um, that's actually something that I do to myself when my hair is longer because I hate getting my hair cut because I don't trust people. Um, I know it's ridiculous. I cut my own hair because um, I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so it's a really easy way to keep up with end damage is just literally cut the very ends off. Um, and unless you just somehow really mess up and start laughing and you know cut too much, you're not gonna mess up your hair. Um, that is a really, really good way to keep your hair a little healthier without you know, destroying it. <laughs> um, the second half of that question was um, the, the buzzing, but we've probably got like a little less than 15 minutes to go too. So maybe before you move on to that, I want to make sure we give space or time to anybody who has questions. Say there's anybody who's on here because they were, they, they just ordered a pair of clippers. I know you're out there and you're ready to just go to it as soon as this webinar is over. Um, speak now, because here's your shot. <laughs> Um, and if nobody else has questions in the next couple of seconds, maybe if you could speak to advice for folks who are going to go the opposite direction, um, which may be me at any moment, <laughs> just so y'all know. Gotcha. <laughs> and um, Ivy? I do, I do have a question. So yeah. this, um, this doesn't normally look like this, but also the stuff in the middle is just like, I don't even, I don't know. It's too, it's not standing up anymore. And then the stuff in the middle gets like a wavy hump that feels much more feminine than how it's supposed to look. Um, so I need to know how to get that out of there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's a great question. <clears throat> um, if you, uh, if you have a good pair of shears and you feel comfortable doing it, um, one of the things I would recommend is um, it's uh, it's called channeling is it is what it's technically called um, but literally like instead of um, you know like picking hair up and cutting it you literally are going to open your blade and just run it through your hair like that like where you want that wave to break up you are just going to run it through your hair and that's going to take out little bits without like chunking your hair. And it's just going to take some of that fullness out that is causing that to want to pop up. Um, so it's, I mean, you're really, really light, thin pieces, but that's a really good way to handle that. Another way to do it is to literally just like pick up, you know, thinner pieces. And, you know, obviously my hair is a lot longer than yours, but just pick up, you know, like little sections and go in to your ends and <laughs> you can literally go into your ends and just like I did with my bangs, you can cut your ends like that. I'm trying not to cut too much of my hair off, but if you cut into the ends like that and you can go deeper, that is going to take the weight out of in here still leave some of this length, but take a lot of the weight out and give your hair the ability to move around the way you want it to more without being super, super pushed around and informed by that wave. Thank you. My pleasure. Ivy, if, if you work up the courage to do that, I have the same issue and I will hop on the Zoom call with you and anybody else here who needs to take care of, of that situation. And let me know because I'll hop on another Zoom or give you a tutorial or whatever you want. I, I love hair. I miss doing hair so much. Like some of my clients are on this call and it makes me so happy because I miss y'all so much. Um, so please, by all means, message me and let me know if I did not answer something or if you need a better answer or whatever. Talk to me about hair. I love it. It's the only thing I know anything about. Any other, any other brave questions? Anybody going to plan on doing anything new to their hair? 
Is anybody doing anything drastic while, while you're socially distanced from your people? Well, I haven't done a drastic style change, but I will say that this is the first time I've properly done my hair or like even thought about putting on eyebrows or anything um, in 20 days. Um, so what I've been doing and what I recommend to everyone at home is be really nice to your hair because it doesn't matter right now. Um, so like do treatments, like put a crap ton of coconut oil in your hair. Um, Melissa, I'm looking at you. Put coconut oil in your hair. <laughs> um, if you have curly hair, coconut oil is like the best fucking thing to help it. Um, coconut oil, aside from giving you a ton of moisture, actually the amino acid chains in coconut oil are really complementary to the amino acid chains that make up the keratin that our hair is made from. So coconut oil is moisturizing, but it can help give you a tiny bit of a protein boost as well. Um, so I love it. And I will put coconut oil in my hair, wrap my hair up in plastic, and then put a towel over my pillow and go to sleep. Um, and you'll like, if you've got dry hair, curly hair especially, you'll be amazed. Like you'll wake up in the morning and that coconut oil is pretty much gone. Um, it's, it's really awesome. Um, other than that, I mean like, I'm vegan, so I don't have mayonnaise, but if you have like mayonnaise, eggs, whatever, um, a lot of stuff that you've just got at home will be so great for your hair. Um, and that's something you can ask me questions about separately too, if you want. Ray, what about for those who have just had enough and they're ready to buzz it? Well, um, I've been there and I think that's great. I think everyone should buzz their head at least once in their life. Um, cause why not? Um, a couple things, if you've never buzzed your head before, Feel your head um, because everybody's got weird lumps and stuff. Um, bye Ivy, thank you. Um, but uh, so I have, for example, I have a huge flat spot right here because I have had repeated uh, trauma to the back of my head right here. Um, and so when I shaved my head, I found out that I've got a big flat spot there and I've got weird indentations. Um, so First thing is make sure you're gonna be okay with, if your head is bumpy, your head being bumpy. Um, I don't think it matters, but if you do, then it matters. Um, after that, you wanna use a good pair of clippers because it is really difficult to give yourself a solid buzz cut. Um, you will look like a porcupine, have little bits of hair sticking out all over the place. So take your clippers, um, if you have a ton of hair or your hair is really long, like if, if I was going to buzz my hair right now, I would um, probably want to put on a bit of a guard first just to kind of get the bulky stuff out of the way. And then you want to go, you know, like if you are going to buzz your hair to a one all over from this length, if you've got guards, throw, throw a four on at least and get the bulk off first. Um, that's going to help it look more even, and it's also going to help um, clippers will are more likely to pull very long hair, so it's going to help you not want to or not accidentally pull your hair out too. Um, once you have done your once over and you're feeling really good about it, go in with some kind of brush, like I was talking fingernail brush or whatever, or if you don't have that, use like a, a washcloth or a towel and just like really, really like exfoliate the crap out of your head with it. It's going to get a bunch of little bits out, but also those little pieces that didn't get cut will start popping out and then you'll be able to go over um, them. Uh, when you're doing buzz cuts, things that tend to get tricky also are calyx. Um, everybody has calyx. I, um, anyone who's uh, got their hair done by me before knows that I have calyx like right in here. Um, and so like it's, Splits and it makes it look like I have weird bald spots and all kinds of fun things. When you are doing a buzz cut or a short haircut and you have really strong calyx and whirls like that, um, if you're doing a buzz cut, you, you want to go to every angle all over, but especially any um, growth patterns, you want to go like this, like every single angle you can possibly go from, that's going to help you get a more even buzz cut. Um, let's see. Um, oh, and if you're doing it a little bit longer, um, when you are, you know, say you're like gonna do like a four up here, 
if you're doing a four here, what can happen is you take your calyx really short, but then they start like doing the thing where they stick up and you look like alfalfa. So with this, you want to kind of wait to do your calyx to last. And then same thing if you're doing a buzz, you know, whether you've got like a super large guard or whatever, go in the direction of your cowlick. Um, so if you've got, so like right here, I've got this cowlick that's kind of a whirl and wants to go this way. And I've got one over here that wants to go this way. So if I was buzzing my hair, I would make sure you can see me. Yes. So with this stuff here, this part is going to go here. So I would want to go that way, but then like this stuff here wants to go that way first. So then you're going to go that way with it. So you want to go with your growth pattern. Um, do that last and then with go with the growth pattern because it's going to leave a little extra length and give you a little more wiggle room. Um, before it just starts popping out like crazy all over the place. So big mirror in the back, small mirror in the front, good <laughs> clippers, cut dry hair with clippers, yes. and also cut the way the cow licked you. Yes. <laughs> yes, cut the way the cow licked you. I love that. I'm totally going to use that. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, and I was going to say also, um, I can show you kind of like my setup here. My house is in a shambles. Please don't judge me. Um, but I'll show you for anybody who missed it before. Um, what I did when I did the, the earlier tutorial is I have this big full length mirror here. And so I set this up and then found myself in, found myself in that. So you can see having the big mirror behind you, then you can kind of move this one around to find yourself. Um, and that's really, really like the best way to do it is to have your big mirror be a, like a permanent mirror. As you can see, I have, can you see? No, it's the wrong way. I know how things work. How the hell do I do this? I don't know technology, I'm sorry. <laughs> Grandpa's a grandpa. Um, so I have a I have a vintage barber station in my house because um, I'm a nerd. Um, and so I've got like that mirror that's like fixed to the wall, um, and that's that's really helpful. Which is why I say like your bathroom's probably your easiest place to do it because then you got the big bathroom mirror anyway. Um, and if you do not have a flipping giant um, mirror. You can use a hand mirror to do it. Um, it's a little trickier because then you're holding something. I did see something on Instagram quite some time ago where this dude like had sort of like a smaller face mirror and then used, I think like hangers or something, strong wire and kind of shaped it and like looped it around his neck so that he was hands free and had this really, really awesome detailed mirror. Um, I'm a little jelly. I kind of want to do that now. Um, and if I had like more supplies, I probably would have. Um, but yeah, so play with your mirror situation a lot. I really recommend just like giving yourself time to play with your hair. Um, even if you don't want to cut it, even if you're just like, I got to figure out a different styling thing, just stand in the mirror with some product and play with your hair. Um, it's, it's kind of fun. Um, and I like looking in the mirror sucks for a lot of us. Um, and I try to be mindful of that um, when, uh, when I've got folks in my chair. Um, unfortunately, if you're cutting your own hair, you're going to have to stare at yourself in the mirror a whole lot. And I know it sucks, uh, but hopefully staring at yourself in the mirror for a good half an hour to figure out how to do your hair will make it a little easier to see yourself in the mirror from now on. Um.